I've come to the conclusion that weathermen are narcissists and I'll explain what that is and they also use the narcissist tactic of gaslighting a narcissist is someone who has an overinflated ego some would say they're in love with themselves it's a deep-rooted psychological dark triad I mean it, it I'm not a psychiatrist but I do know quite a bit about it I've studied a lot about it they find themselves better than the rest of society around them well in order to convince people of this they have to make everybody else feel really stupid and crazy and so they use this technique called gaslighting now gaslighting is from a movie called back I think in the 50s called gaslight what the movie was doing was uh, there was a guy living with this gal and he wanted her to feel crazy so he would turn down the gaslight and then when she said did you turn down the gaslight no uh -uh, I didn't turn down and so over time she began to feel crazy I've never watched the movie but that's what I've heard about it well narcissists do the same thing what they'll do is they'll say you remember when you said and then they'll say that you said something really mean to them and you'll be like no I, I don't remember that at all and they'll do it so much that you'll eventually think I'm losing my mind I am a horrible individual I'm telling this person all the time mean things and then I just forget them and you you eventually uh, start to lose your 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 faculties over it I see the weathermen are doing the same thing they're really not good at their job they're just not instead of just admitting this forecast that I'm getting ready to give you is a bunch of hooey and it's not based on any science it's just what I'm gonna tell you they they gaslight you a few days ago I woke up and I, I checked the weather app now it's a reputable edit weather company I so I checked the app and they said that it was gonna be cloudy so on cloudy days I tried to run the generator I can get a maintenance charge on it so I woke up ran down put gas in the generator started up I was gonna run it for three or four hours get the batteries good nice maintenance charge well then I don't know seven o'clock or so 7 30 the Sun pops up just beautiful clear day there was not a cloud in the sky so I went back to the weather app and they just completely changed it or I'm crazy and I didn't see it right so gaslighting telling me I saw something that I didn't see the solar panels kicked on it really messed up the maintenance charge and it wasted gas I didn't need to waste it well they did it again to me yesterday I mean I've been checking the weather regularly the last few days keeping an eye on this weather front that we got coming in because uh, we, we were supposed to get an all-day rain and I wanted to get things squared away before it rained this firewood here I got a lot of stuff I'll show you this firewood I wanted to get put away that way it didn't get rained on it fell over the other day and I was gonna pick it up well, I was gonna pick it up yesterday actually but I, I got distracted doing something else so I thought no I'll do it today and put the tarp over it and we'll get wet before I went to bed I checked one more time to make sure it wasn't gonna rain now it's supposed to rain tonight that's what it said it was supposed to rain tonight not last night this night it started raining I don't know what time it was last night and it rained hard I mean it was I had earplugs in and I could hear it raining so I mean they, they messed up by 24 hours this is incredible absolutely messed up so I get up this morning I checked the weather up and it's like they just changed it like I just misread it and I was convinced I must have misread it I've been checking this all week how did I mess this up so then Carolyn got up and I asked her she said no it was supposed to rain today now her timing about the rain my, my timing said it was gonna rain tonight her time he said it was gonna start today but whatever either way all the weathermen got it wrong how did they miss it by 24 hours so there was just a lot of things I wanted to get done before it rained for example this shower curtain I got here I've been using clothespins to strap it to these strings here that way the wind doesn't blow it when it's raining it keeps the wood dry here and it works really well but when it's not raining I want to undo the clothespins so the air will blow and keep this wood nice and dry well I didn't pin it up and uh, all this dry firewood that I put up here to keep dry got wet so I'm really running low on firewood that's dry right now so I've got a few sticks laying by the stove they should dry out okay this should dry out in a couple days but man that was frustrating and then of course I got a, another spot over here that I was gonna tarp up I've been I tarped it so I could get firewood out of it so I could load it onto the porch 
and I was going to tarp it up before the rain. This isn't as big of a deal, but it's still frustrating. So it wasn't tarped up, and all this firewood got wet over here. I mean, fortunately, this can dry out for another year. That's no big deal. I did get this tarped up, so that, that's okay. I mean, what are you going to do? They're complete narcissist gaslighters. Well, what I will say is as hard as the rains we had last night, and I'm really proud of the well. And yeah, I'm going to talk about the well again and give everybody a, a refresher on, on the well. Water is so important when you're living off grid. I mean, it's just, I don't think a lot of people think about water, but when you become a nomad, water is probably the biggest thing that you have to think about. Water and internet for me as a nomad was real tough. Of course, I had to continue to work. That's why I had to have internet. A lot of people say, well, if you didn't, didn't have internet, you wouldn't have had any problems as a nomad. Well, I mean, you gotta work. I mean, how, how else are you gonna eat? I don't know. A lot of people thought that money was uh, grew on trees out there in the National Forest or something. But water was a real challenge. We could only carry 40 gallons on our truck. It was, it was pretty heavy. So that, that we, we just filled up buckets of water. Of course, you got to go into town. You got to find water or you got to find a, something. And it was just, it, water was always a challenge. Well, I didn't want to have that challenge living off grid. There are some off gridders that collect rainwater. And I was going to collect rainwater. I was going to build enough roof space that I could collect rainwater if I couldn't find a place with a well. So rainwater was definitely an option. And here in Missouri, I think we get enough rainwater. Now you can Google all this information, how much roof space you need, how much water you're gonna get for that roof space, how much per inch, how much rain each area gets per year. The problem is the storing rainwater. Because obviously here in Missouri, springtime, we get the most rain. Fall time, you, you get the second the most, but in the summer, you hardly get any, and then you gotta figure out how you're gonna keep it warm in the winter. So there's just a lot of challenges to rainwater, but I had seriously considered it. Now, another alternative water source is a stream. It's unlikely a stream, a good flowing stream, would freeze. But in the end, we got this place, and this place had a well. Now, the problem with this well, it was just a hole in the ground. The building, that was around it was a concrete building and you see them around here all over the place everybody's got them well a tree had fallen down and knocked the concrete building down there's still concrete here blocks that was used in the original assembly i still got to get all that cleaned up but that's what this was built out of and like i said there's places all down the road you see these little concrete buildings and you think oh well oh well oh well now these wells were probably dug in the 60s or 70s my guess is this one was dug in the 70s and they didn't dig them like they do nowadays i mean nowadays they dig them really deep this one's only 100 feet deep i mean it's, it's considered a deep well but it's it's not as deep as modern wells they have a well house versus this most wells nowadays are underground they cap it off so you can get down there but the pump is ran under all the hose and everything's ran underground whereas here you would have a, a pump house, probably a, a pump up here. Nowadays, you can have a submersible pump that drops down. That's what I got in here. I didn't know anything about wells. So I had to study a lot. This thing was really dirty water. Every time it would rain, it'd just be dirty water. Of course, like I said, it was just a hole in the ground. So all that rainwater would fall down into it. Well, the concrete base here was pretty much just gone. We got a well packer because the well liner which probably goes down, I forget what it goes down. Let's just call it, I don't know, I don't remember. But it goes down, it's a steel pipe that goes down. Well, it had a hole in it. So we got a well packer and we made a new well liner out of PVC. So this four inch pipe you see goes all the way down to the bottom of the well liner, which doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. The rest of it is just bedrock. That pretty much took care of the problem, pretty much. And it got a lot better, but what we discovered was nowadays they take the well liner all the way down to the water level not the bedrock but down to water level you have streams of water like a creek of water underground and what they do is they take and they drill all the way down to that water level well nowadays like i said they take that well packer all down the water level well here in the olden days they take the well liner down to bedrock 
So what was happening is water would seep down in the ground, down to the bottom of the well liner. So that dirty water was still seeping in through the ground and into the well, causing it to be dirty. So what I did was, is I built this well house and I extended the roof way out and I got what's called a French drain, it's all covered up with leaves. There's gravel, so any running water that comes up from the hill runs down into the French drain and out around and on down the hill. So this is, this is gravel from the French drain. So now it's very difficult for water to actually reach the well. So water's not seeping down. Well, when it rains hard, I mean really hard, uh, after I did this, it rained really hard one time and the well did get dirty. Well, I was pretty sure that it rang really hard last night. I figured this well would be dirty. So what I got to do then is I got to pump out all the water two or three times after the ground dries. So I got to wait two, two days after the rain, pump out all the water, and then the well will fill back up with clean water. Well, this morning I woke up and I figured it was dirty, but I checked it. I filled the tank. It wasn't dirty. So I'm really happy with this repair. So if you find a cheap piece of property with an old well that you got to fix up. I, I may have $500 invested in the repairs on this, which is a lot cheaper than having to dig your own well. And it's a lot easier to maintain this than it is to have rain catchment because rain catchment freezes, you're going to have a problem. Now, the, the way I keep this from freezing, and I've said this many times, is this pipe right here, this black pipe, has a hole about 30 feet down. I put a hole in it, just drilled a hole straight in it. So what happens is all the water if it drains back down into the well. I hope I can inspire you to be proud of your work when you're living your dream. Thanks for watching.